Uh, it's a pleasure to have you yet again. Uh, while we're waiting for people to come on board, we're just going to show you a, a short um, video provided by Minas, which we hope you enjoy. Welcome everybody to part four of the second Sea Light webinar series. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by Madi Al Wasawi from the <coughs> Middle East Navigation Aids Service, ably assisted by Marianne Dutka, who's our product marine product coordinator. Um, you just a bit of housekeeping before we get going. You can have a look at the speakers under the View Options tab at the top of your screen. And the Q&A uh, is open at any time, so you can ask your questions um, and feel free to type in your questions at any time during today's presentation. So I'm delighted to introduce Mardi. <coughs> um, Mardi is the general manager uh, from Mainas. And so in our last webinar, we had Mahesh Shalanchimdani from AMSA and he was giving us a strategic overview of Australia and uh, the, some of the environmental issues on Aton planning and, and strategic planning. Um, and Marty's going to run through today on the strategic importance of an AIS network. Uh, and Marty has his own issues to deal with in his part of the world um, <clears throat> with lots of other countries um, involved in, in a network. So he's going to talk us through that. Um, but a little bit about Mardi. He, he's been in the business 20 years, uh, 20 years plus. Um, he's a man after my own heart and started started out on the tools, uh, fixing aid to, aid to navigation in the field. Um, and then he's come up through the service and was appointed in 2012 to navigation service manager. And then in 2017, he was promoted again to general manager of MENAS. Now, in between, he did a secondment to two years for Ayala, where he was their technical officer. 
Um, so he has a great deal of knowledge um, and he knows a lot of people in the Aton field. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, hand over to you, Marty. Please take the floor. Uh, thank you, Malcolm. Uh, good day to all. Thank you for joining uh, the webinar. Uh, yes, uh, today I'm going to talk about, as Malcolm said, about uh, uh, me, our MINAS experience on uh, AIS. Uh, and about, about our network, AIS network. And so there is a, a similarity or on, on, on any organization having the same, but I will go through our services in the beginning me, uh, the, and a little bit of uh, history of MINAS. Uh, MINAS is uh, based in Bahrain, a branch of uh, London-based uh, International Foundation of AIDS Navigation. And uh, it was, uh, had the major role, uh, role in, in developing the infrastructure of the Gulf waterways since 1911. And it was called PGLS on that time. In 1951, the name changed to MINAS, Middle East Navigation Services. We we have, uh, MINAS have three services, main services, which are funded by a payment of navid use, uh, nav warnings, MSI, uh, marine safety information, uh, aids to navigation, and uh, the DGPS, which is a differential uh, global positioning service. Uh, first of all, I'm going to talk about the MSI. Uh, brought into the service in 1970, in, in, in early 70s, I can say. Uh, it, it consists of three uh, main services that we provide, uh, which is uh, sending a navigation warning to the mariners, updating them of the hazards and uh, any developments in the, in the Gulf. Uh, the second thing is notice to mariner based on agreement with UKHO uh, to, to update the nautical chart, charts and sailing directions. The third one is the sending for, uh, weather forecast uh, with, uh, from the Ministry of uh, Transportation in Bahrain. Uh, MINAS is a self-coordinator uh, on behalf of Bahrain government for area number nine. As you see in the picture here, the range of Bahrain radio for sending the NAFTEX is around 300 nautical miles. So the vessels could benefit from the uh, service once they enter Stair of Hormuz. So it is from the Stair of Hormuz till Kuwait and Iraq up north. The second service is the DGPS service. Uh, MINOS established those sites, the four sites you see on the left in 1997. Uh, that uh, uh, each uh, site range overlap the other, as you see in the picture. So in case of any of the sites fail, so the other could provide the coverage needed for the Gulf. Um, it is free to air, so instead of having a GPS, you can buy a DGPS receiver and get the a better accuracy, which is less than one meter. Uh, MINAS uh, board, IFAN board, have uh, agreed recently to, uh, to recapitalize and to start renewing those sites. Um, as the service is essential for the vessels the area. Um, the third service, which is the oldest service we have, is our ATOS. We are uh, actually the only independent, MINAS is the only independent authority in the world, maybe. Uh, we have, as you see, those red dots, those are our AIDS navigation spread all over the Gulf. And as you see on the left side, the plot, AI's plot density. Uh, those boys are marking the main uh, uh, ship uh, vessel's route to the, uh, to the entrance of the port on the south part of the Gulf. 
and most of those atoms are uh, vital. So uh, I'm going to talk about what are the equipments uh, fitted on the, on the coming uh, uh, slides. Uh, we do a uh, risk assessment. We separated those uh, boys in 19 zones as it is a, a huge area. We do a, risk, a regular risk assessment of those zo zones and uh, uh, change the Aton equipment or the Aton positions based on this risk assessment that we do that I'm going to talk in AI's part uh, on it, about it in details. And also, uh, we, uh, we, uh, we are using uh, other publications on uh, updating those uh, risk assessment uh, reports that we produce. Uh, as majority of the atoms are, you know, uh, vital, uh, CAT1, Asper Ayala, therefore, most of them are fitted with uh, AIS. Raycon and uh, monitoring system both through the AIS and also satellite base. The pictures you see here is for um, uh, the, the report we get from the satellite base system. Uh, as you see in the left top here is, you know, the white part is the, the fence that the boy is allowed to move in. The red dot is the existing location for the boy and the other green are the places where the boy was moving in. So once the boy passed this uh, uh, gray line, an alarm or we receive a message that uh, there is abnormal uh, thing happened or the boy being drifted or so on. There is an accelerometer in case of any accidents. Um, we can observe that those two green lights are for the, the means that uh, the, the, the boy is in the normal uh, movement range where when it's passing the red line means that there is something abnormal happened and that we get, uh, we receive an SMS and an email. There is also uh, sensors for the voltage, battery voltage, AIS, uh, current as well, to make sure that everything working fine. We have a pol policy as we are an ISO 9001-2015 uh, certified. We have uh, a policy for quality control. Uh, so we don't use any equipment without uh, a check. Uh, and we have sheets and uh, checking sheets for each and single unit that we use. Boys, uh, I mean, AI transceivers, transponders, lanterns, regulators, and so on. Also for a quality check, we started checking the lights uh, in, in 2008 by using a, a simple box, a dark box with a lux meter to make sure that the light is working properly and we get the, the illumination we need. But in 2012, we, with the participation in Ayala, we saw that most of the uh, well-known, uh, I mean, authorities uh, are using light intensity room. And with the help of uh, Malcolm, we may established a light intensity room, uh, which was manual on that time. Then in 2017, uh, MINAS team together with an, a microprocessor expert, we have fully motorized this light intensity room. So we can, uh, uh, we check, um, uh, uh, the, uh, we check uh, the lanterns before it goes into the service. Um, there is the three things that we check is the light range, the vertical diversion for the move, uh, movement of the boy, and also uh, uh, symmetrical test for the, for the lens, the lantern lens, to make sure it's giving the, uh, the required range and uh, functionality. On research on development, we uh, it, uh, as a result of participating on Ayala events and the friends we have either from service providers, which are the authorities in Ayala events, or the manufacturers, 
we always keep on developing and uh, uh, changing the, the the units uh, items that we use on on the uh, on and on, on all the services that we provide for example you see in the left side uh, we have upgraded uh, the chain grade the steel grade to uh, as we always put in mind the cost and the running cost uh, uh, at the end and also different types of mooring that you can see on the right side of the picture. But we don't put any item on service until it goes for a trial for at least two years to make sure it's uh, working properly. Uh, the same thing goes with other things like the lantern. For example, this is a spar boy. Uh, some of the friends from the manufacturers share their items, uh, I mean, products with us to, to trial it on the extreme hot climate that we have in our region. Uh, and we report back to them the, the results. And also we do the ex uh, experiments for our side as well to see whether this, uh, those uh, items or products could be suitable to use in, in our region. Uh, same thing, we do other, other trials also and other things. The picture you see on the right, this is a battery box, which is fitted on the boys. We did a trial on the different colors of battery boxes, and we share these informations with, uh, with uh, the, the colleagues and Ayala. And this is one of the trials we did on that. Uh, and we observed that the battery, uh, white battery box, uh, maximum temperature uh, could uh, observe inside the battery box is 42, where the other colors are plus 48. Uh, for that, we decided to change all the battery boxes to, to white. Um, Uh, we have recently uh, been accredited by Ayala through an audit by Trinity House. This was last April. Uh, and uh, we are now ready to deliver level two, but due to the pandemic, as the, uh, the course will contain a practical theory and practical, uh, on site, uh, so we are postponing that till life back to normal and uh, the, 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 the pandemic subsede. Uh, but in the future, we are uh, planning also to deliver level one and three once it's ready in Ayala, the, 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 the syllabus, and also other uh, courses like uh, risk assessment and maybe VTS in the future. Yes, I have completed uh, uh, the, this section and summarized the section about MENA services. Now I'm going to talk about the AIS. Uh, as you, most of you know that I, uh, the, the AIS was first introdu introduced, Marine AIS introduced in 2002 and uh, installed in a lot of vessels, class A and Bs. Uh, it is used for uh, several applications for the AIS, uh, mainly for monitoring the marine traffic and to improve the safety. Uh, and also uh, ATON that we are going to talk about it in details, uh, hydrographic and meteorology information, also for search and rescue, and the, uh, it is an instrument for accident investigation that will be also part of the presentation that I'm going. Uh, sorry, there is one more point. Also, AIS became one of the uh, important elements uh, also in the future of e-navigation. For that, uh, we have, uh, Minos have, uh, focused on AIS since 2007 and eight on AIS because this is this is our specialty. This is actually our uh, network uh, consists of two parts which is the AIS eight on AIS uh, transponder and uh, transceivers. Uh, the second thing is the AIS base stations. We have uh, a server hosted by Minas. It is, I mean, we have the, 
our own system, our own uh, consists of two base stations, and we are going to uh, improve it and may, uh, use more base stations um, that have capability of uh, monitoring message six, which is the health of this Aton, and it can be used for risk assessment or sending virtual that I'm going through it in details in coming slides. We have another AIS feed, which is an external uh, feed uh, through a subscription, inter internal subscription. And we get, get the feed through out the five uh, stations, for five AIS re uh, receivers, where we can monitor uh, message 21 and the general information, AIS information with regards of uh, uh, vessel types, names, and Aton. Uh, uh, information. You can the, uh, see the slide with the chart yes. now? Yeah, the data fade, yes, that's what we're yeah. saying. Okay, yeah, yeah I, I still see the table. Okay, yes, uh, so the one on the top is the external feeder that we throughout the, uh, uh, the internet feed and internet subscription. Uh, that could provide the uh, basic information that all mariners could see it. Uh, the other one is the MINAS AIS network. Uh, we have almost uh, same coverage uh, comparing with the, 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 the feeder uh, from the subscription, as you see. Okay, I'm going to the next page. Yep, we have it done. Don't go any further. Okay. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah. So uh, the difference between those those two systems and capabilities is that uh, the if you own your own network, if you have your own network, you have you can send a virtual aton or any virtual signal. Where in the hosted uh, network you cannot. Um, a high input and output capability for Aton equipment status. It's limited in, in the internet and external one, as you will be all, only monitoring the status, uh, the general uh, information AIS, where in the uh, base station you have, you can see uh, and put more, uh, I mean, sensors on the transceiver or transponder on the buoy, so you can see more information you need, like uh, the, the status of the buoy or any other information, like meteorology. Uh, both requires a base station, actually. Uh, capability to analyze the data is not uh, possible on that external, but on the on our network, you you are hosting the the, the, the network. So you it depends on the uh, storage capacity you have. The more capacity the storage you have, the more uh, uh, data storage you could get. And this will be a raw data that you can use it for so many things uh, that I'm going to talk about later. The coverage. Uh, you know, uh, high signal degradation throughout the external one, a medium signal degradation. I'm going to talk about this and how we improved that. This, there was, a, it was high signal degradation also in our system, but we managed to improve it. Uh, establishment cost is low because uh, you just pay for a subscription or sometimes you may have to install some stations as well for them where, the supplier will provide you with the, with the receivers where, and uh, if you want to own uh, the stations, you will be paying for the establishment to buy the base stations, the server and so on. But it won't be that much. I mean, not too costly comparing with other services. Uh, uh, the running cost is low. Uh, uh, Yeah, uh, so can you see the next? Yeah, this is actually the Aton uh, AIS messages, the important messages that we have uh, to know about the 
uh, that we can use in the boy is message six to monitor the voltage, the lantern, uh, uh, if it's operational or not, uh, the current uh, and so on. Message eight is used for metrology and hydrographic information. So you can install any of hydrographic uh, instrument on the boy and uh, can receive the mess through message six, the information from that uh, those sensors. And uh, the most important thing is the message 21, which is uh, eight on general information. Okay, yeah. So uh, uh, any AIS device have the uh, the maritime mobile service identity, which is the uh, I mean it is the, its ID, which uh, defined in the ITU recommendation. As you see the number here, uh, eight tones always eight ton numbers starts with nine nine always. So once you see nine, nine and any MSI number, this is an eight on, where the three uh, digits after the nine, nine, it's for the country code to know uh, uh, the eight on belongs to which country or the base station. Then those four digits are for uh, uh, a serial number for the station. Uh, real uh, AIS and synthetic use one to start uh, the virtual signal U6. Uh, I'm going to talk about it on the next slide, why the synthetic is one and the virtual is six. Okay. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of uh, quality check, we also pro, uh, uh, have an AI certificate for each unit to have uh, all information before it goes to the to, uh, for, uh, and service. For example, the MSI number, the station name, MSI number, the position, the ATON type. Uh, this is used uh, for uh, quality control actually. And, other uh, informations that you see on the left. Yeah, uh, we started using the type one, which was uh, the uh, first AIS transponder that we used on that time. Uh, which have a limitation on information. And this is information that you can see. Uh, as you see, this is one of the, our uh, boys fitted with AIS. This is MSI number, this is a station name, the type of the boy, whether it's floating or fixed. Uh, for example, whether it's on or off position, where all mar mariners could see that because you, for a boy, you put a fence and when it's out of that fence, it will show that it is off position and the exact position and using uh, uh, the information using which satellite, for example, GPS or Galileo and so on. Uh, as I said that this system have limitation uh for that uh, we started using them and we faced other issues because it's fixed access time division multiply access uh, which the slots are fixed uh, if you have other atons using type one um, i'm talking about the the old units that we have used on that time uh, there was, you know, we were not able to see them all. I mean, if we had several atons in the same place using, uh, fitted with AIS type one, because the, uh, the, the, the use, uh, type one use uh, fixed access. Okay, so. Yes. Uh, the, Advantage of that system is that all mariners could see the message, message 21, as I showed in the previous slide. 
it is considered as another aton. I mean, uh, the boy itself or the aton uh, physically is an aton uh, with a light, where an AI is considered another aton, uh, provides essential information for mariners. Uh, uh, the uh, buying, purchasing those uh, transponders is relevantly cheap. And there is a, a low running cost uh, as you have to change the unit every a long time. And there will not be any fees for uh, uh, receiving the data. However, and uh, some authorities charge for issuing the MSI number or will be a small amount of uh, small charges for uh, the, the, uh, the AIS uh, MSI number. The disadvantages are information limitation. Uh, it transponds only. Uh, uh, we have we have signal degradation. The uh, the issue of uh, the, the the VHF transmissivity either from the de degradation during because of climate or the earth curvation and so on. Uh, require several base stations so you can uh, see the station more often. In our case, uh, our base, our stations are all, most of them are out of the 12 nautical mile. Uh, for that, um, we require a lot of base stations. Uh, the fixed slot that I've already spoken about uh, in the previous slide, and doesn't have capability as it is a transponder only to repeat or to do chaining for an AI signal. So in 2014, uh, actually we were thinking uh, about a replacement of the satellite monitoring system to reduce the running cost as you, because uh, there is a fees, a monthly fees, for, uh, I mean, for the data uh, satellite uh, AIS, I mean, uh, ATON information uh, received throughout the satellite monitoring system. Uh, but we uh, saw that uh, we need the, both systems. We still need both systems as the mariner rely upon the AIS because it could be seen from uh, from our experience, uh, for more than thirty to forty nautical from uh, more than thirty to forty nautical mile, uh, so there is another use for AIS. I mean, the general information that they could see. For that, we have decided to to keep both systems. Type three uh, is uh, random access time division multiple access, which. Uh, changes the slots uh, randomly. So we, uh, uh, once we change the units with the type of three from type one uh, in busy areas, we were able to see the boys. Um, also type of three have the capability of sending message six and message eight. We didn't uh, a trial message eight because we are not dealing with metrology where we are, uh, our stations are uh, broadcasting message six where we can see it through our web, uh, base stations only. Um, and this is an example of uh, one of the atoms. If you see here, uh, this is the AIS uh, voltage, battery voltage. The second one is the current. Uh, to make sure that uh, the, the transponder is wo uh, working properly. And the third one is the lantern battery voltage to make sure that the station working properly. And once we observe, and we are uh, monitoring that the engineers monitoring the, the system on daily basis to make sure that everything is working well. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we faced an issue uh, that we couldn't uh, uh, see the station, and I neither on our network or 
the the feeder the in, uh, from the internet subscription for uh, the stations and remote areas. So we did this trial in the beginning, which is uh, repeat with the man with the assistant of uh, the manufacturer. Uh, repeating the AI signal. For example, if you see, this is Abu Thama boy, and this is another one called Five Fathom Patch. Those two atons uh, are broadcasting the normal, uh, I mean, the, the signal, uh, the message 21 and 6, where those two boys, Bahrain Light Boy and Kaisenrich, acts as a, as a repeater as well. So so this, the, the, the signal uh, broadcasted from those stations which are only 13 or 20 miles. When we are not able to, to see them in the past, once we did repeating, uh, we, are, uh, we were able to see them more often, even in, in, in winter time when the signal uh, were affected. So uh, the improve, uh, we noticed that the improvement range was between 30 to 50 nautical miles. So the stations which were, were, were 50 or 30 to 50 nautical miles away from our base stations, once we did this development, we were able to see it. Um, uh, each uh, unit, for example, those, I mean, the uh, transceivers are able to repeat a three AIS messages. And also number of stations could be reduced if it's, I mean, in, in, in one country. And, uh, on, on message 21, because uh, so, I mean, on type one, you will not be able to repeat. And if you have a lot of atons uh, and uh, a huge area, you have to have a lot of base stations where uh, once you repeat that, repeat the signal and you will be able to see uh, the, the atons, you, you will not need to have uh, as much as uh, base stations, as much as you need on using type one. Uh, this is a screenshot of uh, the, the system we have. Uh, the engineer would know whether the signal being repeated uh, or it directly being received. If it's one means that the signal was repeated. If, if it's zero, then uh, it means that uh, uh, the signal could be uh, seen directly from the base station. Okay, yeah, then uh, we trialed the synthetic aton. A synthetic aton is for an existing aton. I mean, physically there is an aton, but you uh, don't want to install a lot of uh, AIS units so you can send a synthetic signal from one station. So this is one of the boys we have in the center. Uh, where we have uh, uh, succeed to send, and uh, uh, we are now using sending a, a synthetic uh, signal to those atoms. Uh, so synthetic is used for an existing aton. So there is an aton, but a, a synthetic signal is uh, broadcasted, so the vessels could see it uh, either through the. AIS device or uh, the ECDIS. Uh, the transceiver type 3 have the capability to send up to five, uh, say, uh, five synthetic signals, but in this uh, case, we have used four only. That could reduce the uh, number of uh, transceivers used. Uh, but have a disadvantage of uh, that uh, you will not know the status of the boy because uh, uh, the, the signal being sent from one uh, transceiver is fitted on the real one only. Uh, this is a, also we have trialed uh, virtual. We have used it, a virtual uh, uh, AI signal uh, that is... Uh, we have uh, the application of that is for uh, sending for emergency uses actually uh, for marking an aton or hazard or uh, marking an encouraged area restricted area some authorities are using it for marking an entire channel with no physical 
uh, Aton. But uh, from, I mean, uh, uh, experts, they are not, re I mean, uh, in Ayala, they are not recommending to use the virtual permanently without having a physical object for the mariners. Uh, why I kept uh, this slide here and not on the part, the coming part about the, the AIS uh, net uh, feeder is because I wanted to, to mention the difference between the synthetic and the virtual AIS, Aton AIS. The virtual is uh, broadcasted from the base station for uh, the hazard, as you see, uh, this uh, would help uh, uh, you sending the, the signal before you attend the station. For example, if we have you know, a drifted buoy or sank buoy or a hazard vessel sank or something, you send the, the, the virtual signal until you be able to attend the station. For example, during the, uh, once the pandemic started, we were keeping this, uh, uh, the you know, all the stations we have on uh, on standby. Once, uh, if any for any emergency, once any boy like sank or any accident happens, to send this virtual signal until we will be able to attend and to prepare the logistic. The advantage of Type Three is that all mariners could uh, see the message twenty one because it's also broadcasted from uh, the Type 3 as well. It acts as a trust, uh, transceiver, as we saw, uh, and sends the essential information, as we saw in other cases for, I mean, the battery voltages and other things. High in and output capability, like the more uh, information you need, the more sensors you can uh, uh, link to the, to the transceiver, but you have to Keep in mind the power consumption as well. Uh, repeating data to extend the Aton AIS coverage. Uh, uh, and the AIS device can allocate the, the, the slot so you can see it from the base station. Uh, the established, I mean, the, the, the unit to price is uh, uh, cost is higher than type, uh, uh, type one. Uh, the dis disadvantage of that, and have the same issue with the uh, VHF uh, transmissivity and degradation. Uh, uh, yes, okay. Yeah, these are the major uh, challenges of, uh, mm. of an AIS uh, uh, system. Uh, uh, signal degradation during winter that we have noticed, uh, monitoring atoms in remote areas, uh, capabilities between the AI's devices, multi-base stations required to, to, to get the uh, needed coverage, and also which the same issue with all other uh, equipments is that uh, if the manufacturer discontinue making uh, the system. But I'm going to talk about only the degradation. Uh, this is uh, an example. This is the, the picture you see during the winter. We see less uh, signals where in, in summertime, we have a good coverage of AIS. Those blue dots are the atoms and some fixed structures, which we have uh, improved by uh, using, uh, we changed, uh, th this is actually the, this was the existing performance of the antenna where we have enhanced and changed the antennas to get a better coverage by using two types, which is the high gain antenna and also the directional. The system improved, as you see here, from a 3 dB to 10.8 in by using the other type of uh, antennas uh, and use, uh, use of the repeating uh, uh, repeaters as well. And we are planning to increase the base stations, but our difficulty, because uh, those base stations are in different countries and each country have its own system and rule. Uh, the, 
Yeah, so this was the improvement done. This was the previous performance of the antenna coverage. The yellow, highlighted yellow part is the extension coverage that we got. And we succeed to see majority of our stations during the year. Uh, yeah, uh, we all uh, we did a lot of trials with the manufacturers. Some systems succeed, some not. But I have, as you see in this slide, the use of both systems. I mean, satellite monitoring system and AI system would ab uh, you will be able to 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 see the performance of any equipment. For example, on the on this picture and top on the top right is the performance of the, 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 the I mean we were checking one of the systems and we saw that uh, the voltage drop and we worked out the information with the manufacturer so they improved their unit performance and they did some changes on this on, on the design. Okay, we monitor the stations throughout the three uh, monitoring uh, things we have, which is the external AIS feeder uh, on daily basis, uh, MINAS AIS network, and also uh, satellite monitoring system. You may ask why you need all of these systems to check, check them all, because sometimes uh, if we couldn't, if we were not able to see the station through one of the systems, uh, we could see it at least on the satellite. Uh, uh, not only AIs have its own issues, also the satellite uh, monitoring system have uh, an issue, sometimes issue communication between the ATON and the satellite or the satellite with the server hosted by the service provider. Uh, and we use this information for uh, calculating the availability. Uh, for example, this is the uh, this is uh, the monitoring uh, analysis for this, some of the stations. For example, you see Cobar Beacon not appeared on one of the on the AIS for uh, for some period, but during this time it was seen on the satellite base. So we make we knew that the station is working properly. In case we didn't see them in both uh, systems, I mean an AIS or satellite, we contact the nearest port to make sure uh, or to talk to the vessels passing by to let us know whether this station is um, operational or not to decide on sending the engineers to rectify the station. Uh, this reduced uh, uh, a lot of uh, cost for us because we had a lot of false reports in all days and we were uh, not seeing the stations when, when, when there was no system fitted on those uh, uh, on those atoms. And a lot of false reports uh, came. Either the mistake was due to the name, uh, the, the mariner may, I mean, the vessel when they passed, they were not sure about the Aton name or, uh, uh, or sometimes they passed, I mean, early morning and there is a threshold when this uh, photo cell uh, works or, uh, and for several reasons. A result of that, and also uh, with the trials we do and the changes we uh, we have done uh, 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 on the systems. Uh, for example, the trial you saw that we did on the battery box uh, colors, and we did also on on batteries on the system themselves, and we changed a lot of uh, products and, um, for example, battery sizes, recalculating solar systems. So as you see here in 2011, we had a plus 100 failures uh, all over the year. But now in 2020, 20, we had uh, less than 20 failure, uh, which uh, is, uh, you know, the improvement was more than 80%. Uh, th this is yeah. This is the risk assessment we do uh, on on the zones we have. We use all those pub uh, publications and also the AIS data to do the the risk assessment. 
this is one of the trials we did uh, and, and, and uh, to, to inform the authority the importance of the AIS that you see on the right. And the last thing is uh, the investigation. For example, this is a, a real case that we had. There was a, a boy collision where uh, we didn't know who, who did the accident, but from the uh, AIS video playback, you can see this uh, green uh, vessel hits the boy and then came back to check whether the boy being hit or damaged or not. Mm -hmm. So you can use the AIS data for investigation and this is something good, but with a combination of satellite monitoring system will be also, uh, will give you much better uh, I mean, uh, prove to know the time, exact timing and so on. Mm -hmm. And this was my presentation and hope you uh, uh, enjoyed it. Oh, absolutely fantastic, Mahdi. What an in-depth, thorough presentation of your network. Um, we've, we've got time just for a couple of questions. I'm going to kick them off here because I'm fascinated by this. Um, very, very interesting. One of your earlier slides, you, you had it set out your sort of strategic vision, but going through your slides, it, it, it kind of almost, it's like you've developed the system over time and the, the strategic benefits have come out. Was it always your intention to, to reach those end goals of using the network for IRAP and collision and how, how did it play out? Was it a bit of trial and error or was that your strategic end goal? Uh, uh, to be honest, no, we were, uh, uh, our plan was only for mainly just for the eight to monitor the Aton in the beginning. But as we went through and we saw the capabilities, we said, why not to use it and improve the other services that we have? Yep. <clears throat> excellent. Excellent. And you mentioned cost there. Um, you know, I mean, a license for an AIS feed, you're saying it's a low cost. Um, and then for establishing a network, it's it's a medium cost. Um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but can we can we put those figures in perspective? Yeah, yeah. I, I meant when it's uh, annual low cost for the TRA to issue the uh, some governments are charging for MSI number. Uh, the network that you have, it's only you need base stations, which. Uh, which will not cost much, but, and you will have uh, uh, to have a, a small server, but this depends on the coastline that you are controlling. You know, if I'm talking about, for example, Australia, AMSA, you know, uh, war, uh, you know providing service for an entire continent, mm -hmm. but I'm talking about a uh, smaller size of uh, uh, countries that uh, <coughs> the, the charges relevantly is establishment mm -hmm. is a medium cost comparing <coughs> with, uh, with if you are using the, uh, the internet feed. Now, we do have a few engineers on the call as well. Um, I suspect they're going to ask about power, but we, we, we might save that discussion for a future debate, um, particularly with regards to repeaters and synthetics, um, the power that's required to transmit those messages. Um, in answer to Hollow, uh, yes, you'll be able to get the presentation afterwards. That We are recording this webinar We'll be putting it live. Uh, we'll be putting the recording up on our website in the next couple of days. Um, a question from Michael. Ah, with regard to radar, do you think AIS will replace radar in VTS? Uh, VTS, I'm not sure, but I'm, if, uh, if he's mean, uh, he means the radar, the Raycon, maybe, yeah, because the Raycon cost uh, is high. Mm -hmm. uh, and AIS relevantly is much, much cheaper and could be seen from longer distance. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much again, Mardi. Um, I'm just going to wrap things up here. Um, we saw in your presentation there that the benefits of the strategic importance of developing an AIS network and all your other quality controls with regard to the provision of ATON in your area of the world, which is fascinating. Um, in our final webinar, we're very, very lucky to have James Crawford, 
who is a, a well-known figure in the Aton world. Um, he was head of the Chilean uh, Ace Navigation Service for a number of years, but has recently changed role to be their Ayala ambassador um, or their Ayala assessor and rollout. Um, he's an engineer by trade, um, but he does have a master's in law. Um, but James has led all sorts of um, projects, renovation projects through Chile, and he's been a very active participant in, in numerous Ayala workshops and symposium. Um, so I look forward to seeing you all then on the 19th of August. So uh, I just, I just would like to thank you, Malcolm and Sea Light, for providing this opportunity uh, and for the audience uh, for their uh, time and patience. And anyone would like any uh, information, they can drop us uh, an email on the, uh, the, the, we have the general uh, info uh, email uh, that uh, hopefully will uh, answer him on, on, uh, on a timely manner. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Mahdi. And we look Thank forward you. to seeing you all on the 19th of August for our concluding webinar. So thank you very much to everybody and we'll see you next time.